Hello everyone! Today we'll be going over how to make pigeon and dove toys out of toilet paper rolls. Something I love about these toys is that they are accessible to everyone. So long as you have scissors and toilet rolls, it will cost you no additional money. And they are very quick to make. So no matter your income bracket or time availability, you can give your birds something to enjoy. While I'll be walking you through a few specific designs I've come up with that Tallulah enjoys, there are endless possibilities so go ahead and experiment if you'd like to. If you are new to giving pigeons and doves toys, there are a couple things to know that will help you understand how they use them and how to better design your own. Pigeons and doves do not play with destructible toys like parrots do. They also cannot manipulate things with their mouth or feet like a parrot, so lots of commercial bird toys are virtually useless to a dove or a parrot. There are three ways pigeons and doves typically interact with toys. Anything resembling nest materials is usually very exciting for a pigeon or dove. Not only do they like to try and build a nest with them, but they'll often just carry them around, shake them, throw them, bring them to you, or just generally enjoy interacting with them. As with most animals, foraging, which is the activity of searching for food, is what their wild ancestors spent most of their life doing. Because of that, setting them up to have to work for their food is very enriching for them. It helps slow down their eating, stimulates their brains, and they will often enjoy it so much that once they're used to foraging, it's not uncommon for them to choose to forage over a bowl of food that's sitting right in front of them. Pigeons are a very big fan of boxing and play fighting. They will do this with each other, they will likely want to do it with you as well, and if provided with a toy that they can do it with, it's almost always an instant favorite. Most of the toy designs we'll be making in this video can be used in more than one of the capacities mentioned previously. When you're designing a toy for your bird, just be sure that it will work well considering their anatomy, and remember that the three categories we just mentioned are typically the only way they like to interact with enrichment, so be sure it fits at least one of them. What you'll need. Scissors. If you're a kid watching this, I feel obliged to say please be careful. Toilet paper rolls. A pigeon. Your birds can join you in making these, as Tallulah does in this video. I'm actually sitting on the floor to film this video. She was on the opposite side of the living room when she noticed what I was doing and came running over. Just be sure no curious pigeons get in the way of the scissors and get hurt. Treat. Or you can use just bits of food from their food mix. We'll also be using this video. Just be sure they're the kind your bird likes. I'm doing this on a cutting mat. It's definitely not necessary. If you don't have one but would like something like it, a scrap piece of wood or a few layers of cardboard can have a similar effect. Number one, plain roll. An unaltered roll is a good toy for many pigeons. You can put a treat inside it to increase intrigue. They can be used to play fight or for foraging. Tallulah likes to play a game where I stand them up on a table and she runs around grabbing them and throwing them off the table. She's adorably impatient waiting for me to pick them up and put them back up for her. Number two, treat log. For this, you'll need scissors. Please be careful not to stab anyone or anything. And just poke a ton of holes. I intended to transition to a roll with a whole bunch of treats stuck in the holes. As you can see, I was having a particularly challenging time getting them in. I swear I have done this in the past. And those I did get in, Tallulah immediately removed. Perhaps if you're choosing to do this particular one, don't include your pigeon until after you're done. Number three, the tree. We'll start with one toilet paper roll and scissors. Simply cut strips to about halfway. and do this all the way around. Give it a scrunch, and you can add some treats for interest. This works well, once again, for boxing. Tallulah likes play fighting with these. And as demonstrated here, it also works for foraging. Number four, boxing chain. For this, you'll start by squishing the tube flat. Then cut a quarter inch strip along one side until it's almost all the way across. Then flip the tube and do it again just below. You can then stretch it out and form a chain. This makes it so you can give the bird a roll that is free swinging to fight with. This is actually one of Flu's favorites. Number five, rings. I heavily recommend only letting birds play with these toys and any toys made out of the rings uh, under supervision. These are definitely not for the kids. If they were to get one stuck over their head, they could get really badly injured. All you do to make the rings is cut about a quarter inch all the way across. That said, Tallulah thoroughly enjoys playing with these with me. One of her favorite things to do with these ones is to play fetch, only I'm the one that has to go get them after she throws it. Number six, ring ball. You can also use these rings to make a ball. Just start by placing one inside the other, changing the angle as you go. You 
you end up with a hollow ball that can be played with as is, or you can put some treats inside it and let the birds work out how to get them. Apparently that piece of corn does not pass the Tallulah inspection. Number seven, spiral. Starting with a fresh roll again, find the seam and cut along it, spiraling up to the middle. Continue doing this, cutting each strip to be about a quarter inch. You can give it to the bird as is. Once again, this works for foraging and play fighting. Number eight, double spiral. Tallulah prefers it to be more dramatic by doing the same thing to the opposite side. This version is very springy and fun to interact with. Number nine, spiral box chain. You can also mix and match these different styles for example, the spiral box chain. Number 10, strip. Starting with a fresh roll again, you're going to cut along the seam the same way we did with the spiral, only this time cut all the way to the end of the roll. Now cut as many quarter inch strips as you can from that same line. The strips can be used as nesting material or to be added to a larger foraging toy or tray. Number 11, zigzag. If you take a single strip, you can fold it back and forth tightly over itself. You can press it once to help it hold its shape. Then once released, it becomes a zigzag. This can be used in the same ways as all the other strips, only it's a bit more interesting and offers some new shapes. Number 12, freehand snail shell. Doing nearly the same thing again, only instead of folding back and forth, you're going to fold it around itself. Compress it when finished, and uncurl when you're done. You'll have a small spiral. It can be used in all the same ways as the others, with the added benefit that sometimes it will roll away and the bird will have the opportunity to chase it. Tallulah likes doing this. Number 13, spring. Take two strips, lay them overlapping at the ends. Fold them over each other, alternating as you go. This will make a spring. <laughs> 14, coil. If you grab your target stick, and if you don't have one of those, just a clean chopstick, straw, or pencil, or anything else around the same shape and size will work. You can wrap the strip diagonally up along the target stick. Compress it. Once removed, you can stretch it out a little and it will be a coil. Number 15, snail shell. If you do nearly the same thing, but wrapping it on top of itself, you will make another snail shell shape. This one will typically be more neat and rounded. Number 16, bunch. Gather up a selection of strips, tie them together in the middle with another strip. This can be interacted with in a similar way to the double spiral, only a smaller version. Here are a few examples of how I've used the strips and the shapes that can be made from them to make foraging more interesting for Tallulah, both by adding them to her larger foraging dishes and simply by covering her food with them in her normal dish, turning into a small foraging tray. I hope you found this video interesting. I'd love to hear about your birds, favorite toys in the comments. If there's any topics you'd like me to discuss or tutorials you'd like me to make, leave those in the comments below. Please subscribe if you'd like to. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.